On Thursday, we were treated to the best game of the year. It had everything from crazy shot making to beautiful teamwork and throw in some referee influence plus two overtimes. As this game went back and forth, it got even more epic with each minute, culminating in a thrilling finish for the ages. In part one, I discuss the X's and O's in detail. And in part two, we'll dive into some of the problematic calls by the referees to enlighten and explain what their process was and how they arrived at their calls. With me is Ronnie Nunn, an NBA referee for 19 years, head of officials for five, and director of development for three more. Great. Well, Ronnie, thank you so much for joining us today. I didn't think we'd be back so quickly, but man, great game last night. Lots to unpack. So let's get into it. What do you say? Let's do it. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Well, we got the first play where uh, a mistake by Bellinelli. He gets the ball uh, stolen from him, and they're coming down. Derek White's the only guy back and has to take a foul. Now, a lot of people didn't understand the call here. They did not rule it a clear path. What is your take on this, and considering the rules are how it fits into what should be called? Yeah, you know, this is really a hair away from a clear path. And it's one of the uh, unique clear paths that people don't understand right away. If the player can pass that ball to his receiver before he's fouled, he, we could have a clear path because here's a defender taking away a clear path to the hoop once the player receives it and lays it up. But in this case, if you foul a player with the ball still and prior to the pass, then you don't have a clear path. And in this situation, upon review about a clear path, we have the second scenario. It is not a clear path because the foul occurs while the player has possession of the ball. Now, is the position of the defender key here? Because I know that part of the component of the rule is that if you're behind the offensive player and you reach out and grab him, even if he has the ball, that would still be a clear path right? if you're beyond the uh, top of the key in the backcourt. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. In other words, if you're trailing a player and you grab him from behind, that's the traditional foundational clear path. But this is the clear path people don't usually talk about. And again, this is not a clear path officially, but it's very close to one. And that's the one that has the two-on-one, three-on-one, where you attack the passer to stop the play. And then, uh, and then, of course, if the passer gets the ball released and you stop him, it's a clear path. And if you get him when the pass is in, in process as we have it here, it's not. Well, we have our next clip up here coming up in the double overtime where Paul George goes to the basket, and I got to tell you, Thunder fans across the world let out a shout because he went to the hole, it looked like there's some contact, and he reacts kind of, you know, sharply to the referee, and he tees him up. So, Ronnie, walk us through what referees are thinking about in this situation, whether you think it was merited, and maybe really quickly to complete the puzzle here, do you think he got fouled? Yeah, he did get fouled, and uh, I understand where one of the two officials didn't see it, but let, let me just reiterate for officials and, and everybody, the, the lead official under the hoop is really primarily going to handle this play, but the slot official who's up at the uh, upper side of our screen to the right, he's also involved in drives to the hoop. He can see certain angles to the hoop. This is a foul. It should have been called. However, how you comport yourself after not being uh, given the opportunity as the, of the foul you got to be careful. Listen, key time in the game, critical. Yes, the guys missed a foul. But also, of course, George, unlike him, uh, loses a little of, uh, of his composure, slaps his hands at the official two times, and, and of course, puts the arms up and brings a lot of attention and uh, disrespectful thing that we've talked about before in terms of uh, in engaging an official, even on a heated a moment situation. This situation brings too much attention, and, it's, and obviously a technical foul was issued. Right. Now, I mean, I would love to see some more restraint, but it's, it is hard to argue. Any other time in the game, that's a technical before he's halfway finished with what he did. Uh, although people would argue Draymond gets away with it, and that is a whole other case we can do a show on for 25 minutes if you want later. And I think that that will lead us nicely into the next play, which was a desperation shot at the, at the shot clock buzzer. And it led to a huge long review, and there's some components here that are happening that I think you need to explain to us because it might seem pretty clear what happened here, but what are the little nuances that we have to be aware of on a shot like this in a situation like this? This is one of the frightening things as a referee. You know, block charges are what they are, and, and, but when you're dealing with clocks and you're dealing with whether the ball hit the rim 
it is, it is frightening, especially during my era when we didn't have chances to go see such plays uh, till the end of my career. But however, this piece is near that rim that can get confusing. The flange that holds the rim to the backboard is that orange piece, almost like a square up there. That's part of the rim. You'll notice the trajectory of the ball is changed. The angle changes. Here the angle is very subtle, but it changes. And it says to me it didn't hit the rim uh, in terms of the rim, but it hit the flange. And the other piece that sometimes extends a little bit is the bottom of the board that has those rubber protections because the backboard, if you don't have them, is, have very sharp edges and corners. So it might have hit that, but I see it more as hitting the flange, um, which is a pretty big piece that holds the rim. And I think it's a, uh, a play where the ball did hit the rim. Sure. And now why this was crucial was because it got knocked out of bounds. And as long as if it had gone off and they felt like it didn't hit the rim, it would have been a shot clock violation and it would have been thunder ball. But instead it had to be that to deal with who knocked it out. Uh, that I think was also part of the replay, which took a long time to go through. And it looked pretty clear to me on the replay there that Jeremy Grant did have a kind of big movement with his right hand and knock it out. And they got that play right. So uh, the Spurs were waiting on pins and needles here to make sure that they got that. Uh, the ball did hit the rim. Otherwise, it would have been the Thunder ball. And that would have been an, a, another uh, disadvan disadvantageous possession for the, uh, the Spurs without question. So let's get down to the under 30 seconds left in double overtime. Aldridge has been killing them all night with a career high of 56 points. He rolls to the basket. He goes up to block the shot, and we see some stuff happening out there. The referees blew the whistle. Was this a good call? You know, this was a difficult call. In this particular case, there's an unusual block of the arm and the ball. Usually it's down by the hand when you get blocks. This one, there's an arm extended. It's not completely vertical, but it's saved. Uh, by that movement because it gets to the ball first. And when you're seeing this flailing like that, um, you know, you, you think that maybe there's a foul here, and I certainly don't want to miss it. But there isn't, in my view. And by the way, Aldridge kind of threw his arm towards the defender to try to get contact. The problem was, when he went to do it, the arm was at the ball. So, hey, this is a tough play in basketball for anybody to see, especially the trained eye of officials. So the last clip we have today, so Ronnie, walk us through the rule and how this unfolded as uh, Stephen Adams gets fouled by DeMar DeRozan sort of away from the ball and the ball still goes in from three-point land. What is the rule and how it's supposed to work? This is a, another teammate being fouled while a ball could be in the motion of a shot. Now let's just say, let's make it this way. Let's say it's in the motion of a shot. He's caught the ball, the foul occurs, and as he caught the ball, he's going into his shot. That would be a play where if the shooter makes the three, the player that was fouled on the floor there, the screener, would uh, go to the line for the N1. If the shooter misses the shot and the foul is still called, well, then it's the same team's ball, either to the sideline, but if the team is in the penalty, that screener would go to the line and shoot two for the penalty. So this, the only thing different about this play is the shooter is not involved in being fouled at all. My only issue here is I don't think it was enough to be called foul. I really feel like Adams is kind of, you know, moving a little bit himself. I feel like DeMar DeRozan's got some contact to help him get around. So my biggest issue there was that they called it in the first place. What do you think about the actual call? Yeah, you know, I'm, uh, if I was the director right now, I would probably just say to the official, I'm not real happy with that call. And I want you to process this play a little bit better. And right here, I don't see anybody really that we can pinpoint as a foul. I mean, Adams moves a little bit. DeRozan moves a little bit. There's a grab. There's a little bit. But I, I don't think it's anything that took away from the opportunity to shoot this shot. Uh, I don't see it as an offensive foul. I don't really see it as a defensive foul. Yes. You've got to get something really overt, whether it's on the offense or the defense. And if it's there, call the play. Ronnie, thank you so much for coming on and breaking this down. I know a lot of the Thunder fans might feel a little bit better. I certainly think that the Spurs fans are happy because they, they did get that win anyway. But nonetheless, always a pleasure to have you here and help us break this stuff down. Thank you so much, Coach. Heck of a game. Yeah, and we'll see you real soon, I'm sure, with more calls to go through. And don't forget, sports fans, that B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel, we're a conversation. You in? Are you in, Ronnie? I am in, Coach. Thank you.